Okay. Welcome everybody. This is Louise Clark. I'm on the committee of uh, Wirigen Pegarillen, and uh, it's a, a beautiful vision of unity for the world. And I'm very excited to introduce today Uncle Col, Uncle Colin Watigo from Australia. And uh, I'm very excited to hear more about who he is and, and how he came to know Kano Walker who is the founder and visionary of, of this movement. And um, welcome, Uncle Cole. I'd love you to tell us a little about yourself. Okay, thank you, Louise. And I want to just uh, um, thank you for the opportunity to, to have a yarn with you. Look, before I do, I would love to be able to pay respect, um, if, um, if you don't mind. And I'm, and I'm very honoured to be able to do it in the ancient Aboriginal language of our Remanjiri people. Um, Nanyara, Nanyara, Andu Angai Narawa, Wirijin Pegrilin, Napa Kilinyanti Yundi Yokorni and me. Apple, uh, Remanjiri, Dari, Narawa, Australia, Torres Strait, Sayatarawa, uh, South Africa, uh, Inyeri Yoko, Apple, Rui, Remanjiri, Dari, Narawa, Australia, Torres Straits, uh, South Africa, uh, Inyeriyoko, Rui, Nebnan Kriwalan, Yanti, Yindio Korni, and Mim, Rundi, and Apa, Namui. In the ancient language of our Aboriginal uh, ancestors, the Remanjiri people, uh, it's a great honour and a privilege for me to be able to pay respect uh, in that language, in the Remanjiri language. I acknowledge the Remanjiri elders and their people. Uh, I also acknowledge the land where I'm actually currently on at the moment and pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. But I also pay respect to all our First Nations peoples, our Indigenous First Nations peoples of Australia and the Torres Straits and their elders and my elders. But I also acknowledge all of our Indigenous uh, First Nations peoples, uh, not only uh, uh, in South Africa, but all over the world. And, and I also pay respect to all of those of us who have links to other countries, but also to all of your listeners whose origins may have come from another country um, and, uh, be, and pay respect to your ancestors. I believe our paying respect and, and our origins are just so extremely important. Um, um, as we do our journey. So thank you for that opportunity, Louise. Thank you so much. How, what a beautiful honouring. And, uh, of course, it's, it's not, not often done that, that we do remember our origins, where we come from, and all that has come to pass to bring us to this place. So thank you very much for bringing that in. Thank you. Look, uh, by way of introduction, my name is Cole Wadigo. I'm a very proud Bundjalung man. That's in the Northern Rivers District of New South Wales um, in Australia. Um, I'm also a proud Torres Strait Islander descendant um, and also uh, a proud South Sea Islander descendant, but I've also got ties and links to so many other countries around the world uh, through my ancestry as uh, as well as my Aboriginality and my and my Torres Strait Islander descendancy. For a little bit about myself is um, um, I have not long retired from the Australian Defence Force. I was very honoured to be able to follow in the footsteps of my grandfather, my grandfather's brothers, my father and my uncles, and as even serve alongside two of my own brothers who uh, also served this great nation. And it is a great honour and a privilege to be able to do that, particularly as a First Nations man, um, and stand shoulder to shoulder and side by side. Uh, so many other men and women whose origins are from so many other countries. Right. And I think this really epitomises and summarises Wirichin. Um, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But that being able to... Um, to stand side by side, come together um, in a unified cause for a good purpose, for a righteous reason. Uh, and and that's, that's the real essence and spirit 
of Wirtchen. During my time in the Defence Force, as I mentioned, I retired um, only a few years ago, but I, I had the privilege of serving for 43 years. And over that period of time, I've had the great honour and privilege of even serving alongside our South African um, um, warriors in, in uniform on opera. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, was even presented, uh, well, uh, at that time, they were going to present me with their flag. There's a long story there. I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> an operation in two countries at that particular time. And it was the first time even um, um, as Austra Australia and, and many other nations came together after such a long time of peace after Vietnam. So it was in the very early stages before um, uh, we, we started seeing uh, massive uh, uh, deployment and, and manoeuvres and, and operations of, of many uh, countries overseas. But to serve alongside uh, your South African uh, warriors in uniform was a great honour and a privilege. And even um, I had the honour of uh, doing uh, running the parade um, um, instrumental in being part of that when, when it was time to hand over. Uh, that particular country uh, to the oncoming uh, guardians for that time. But, but in that 43 years of serving, um, I saw a lot of change. And, and I think one of the biggest things that come out of it for me was that the changes that I saw obviously um, evolved through, through the defence system, um, which, was, uh, which is always evolving. But one of the things I noticed, uh, particularly as a First Nations soldier, is that I was very comfortable um, in that environment, standing alongside, working alongside, training alongside other men and women, irrespective of their ethnicity or where they come from. But unfortunately, particularly here in Australia, like so many other countries, it wasn't always the case. In fact, it definitely wasn't the case when you stepped outside of, that, of the structure of defense right uh, and we know the history and we know the story um and many countries have the same story um but one of the things i do know um uh, about the spirit of Wirichan and the way uncle uh Kana, uh and i can mention his name we've been given permission to mention his name is that um the spirit behind that was a, was about anything but other than um, exclusiveness. It was about inclusiveness. It was about righteousness. It's about um, um, acknowledging and recognizing people's culture or cultures. Um, at the same time, respecting those cultures, respecting beliefs, but also sharing community. Yeah. And and if, if people start listening to some of the um, wherever they may hear it from um, different different interviews and whatever, you'll hear a common theme uh, throughout the whole Wirichan story, and that is about sharing, sharing, um, and um, equally. Now, it's quite interesting. Um, I, uh, I could tell you uh, some dates and facts and figures, but, but in particular, a significant event was the, the initial Wirichan Pegrelin um, ceremony, which was actually conducted on Remingery land. Uh, and at that particular time, one of our, uh, the general that was in charge of our whole Australian Defence Force Army, uh, uh, General David Morrison, uh, the, uh, Lieutenant General David Morrison, he, um, he was the recipient of a magnificent kangaroo skin, which had nine layers of dreaming which typified um, the spirit behind Wirichan. Um, and it's a magnificent piece of work. It was done by Carno. It was presented by Uncle Carno. And I had the honour and privilege to be part of that ceremony. But that kangaroo skin now hangs very proudly in the Australian Defence Force Army headquarters. Um, and um, it, again, talks about uh, the story itself about this, um, the unison and the and the unity 
of sharing um, equally and uh, but respecting uh, differences at the same time. I, I've said it before, um, Wirichan, in, in essence, in language, um, is a Remingeri word. And it's really important that people understand the origin of the word Wirichan. It is a Remingeri word. It's used a lot these days, I think, by many people, and uh, and that's an honour. I, I consider that an honour uh, for the Remingeri people. Uh, that that word has been um, used to signify um, the spirit behind that word, which to me tells me very clearly that the heart and the spirit behind Uncle Kano is getting out there, Absolutely. Um, and what it was all about. So, and that's 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 tremendous. But um, in the in the in that particular ceremony, um, the 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 kangaroo skin itself, and if ever you get an opportunity to have a look at it, um, and I really encourage people to uh, to try to bring it up um, uh, on um, on media. Um, you the when you when you in essence, what it was about was recognizing and um, several things, but there is a, a symbol on it which was it represents an Australian digger, an Australian soldier who is who was actually uh, Uncle Carno's um, uncle, great uncle, uh, Uncle Arthur Walker, who actually served in the Australian Defence Force overseas and died overseas. The, the artwork, there are two magnificent um, uh, birds into the skin, um, symbols uh, representing both our uh, Uncle Carnos and our ancestors, male and female. There's a Southern Cross. And the essence of the dreaming story is that uh, wherever our people go, and even if they, uh, particularly for such a... Uh, you know, serving country and, and pass overseas in the, in protecting not only their own mob and family, um, but strangers, um, people they don't even know. Right. Um, the the symbolism of the of the ancestors and the Southern Cross spiritually means that the Southern Cross becomes a beacon that no matter what where you go or what what where the world or your journey takes you. If for whatever reason you don't get back home, your spirit, um, the ancestors will use the Southern Cross to bring your spirit home. Um, and, and that within itself brings a lot of comfort and peace and closure um, because there is so many people who, who have said their last goodbyes, particularly for defence, um, um, members who have served our great country and uh, have not come home. Yes. So I'm very honoured to be part of the a, 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 a massive ceremony where, uh, sometime after that event, um, uh, another uh, event took place, which was the, uh, uh, which was where we did actually did ceremony at Gallipoli, with other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander men, and women, uh, men um, uh, ceremonially, and uh, and that symbolism. Uh, we got to actually, the, uh, the Remingeri language was actually spoken in Turkey um, uh, during a, a very special ceremony there. Uh, and both the ode was spoken and the language um, as well. And um, which goes back to the spiritual side of, of Wirichan. And to me, in, in language and translation, Wirichan predominantly specifically means basically um, a white man and black man coming together or a white fellow and a black fellow uh, coming together. But it's a lot more than that because the, the, the history, the dreaming of Wirichan itself, Wirichan is, the, is in language is, the, is those two events taking place. Eberlin is a remedy word which means dreaming. But this dreaming story um, actually starts a long, long time before white fellows were even here um, in Australia, and um, and it's all linked spiritually to uh, to our uh, to our ancestors 
and the spirit behind Wirrigin. Um, you know, um, Wirrigin to me is not a place. It doesn't represent um, any specific place. It doesn't respect, it, it doesn't even represent any particular uh, person or people. Uh, it, I think, um, and the intent of it from Uncle Carno was that it actually, it's a, it's a spiritual, it, it's a spiritual uh, uh, word that absolutely um, um, is more powerful than just being somewhere with someone or yeah. someone coming together, like shaking hands. Yes. Much more powerful than that. And, and I think when people have an understanding of that, um, it just changes the whole perspective of the word. When you just say words like a black fella and a white fella coming together, it's much, much, much deeper than that. Uh, it's like not meeting someone going down the street. It, 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 it's much deeper and means a lot more than just that. So um, that where I actually first met Uncle Carno was in Adelaide um, at um, the Torrance Parade Ground. And if ever anyone gets the opportunity to go to, that's the capital of South Australia, um, uh, to there's a place there called the Torrens Parade Ground. And it was during the unveiling of two Aboriginal statues. One, Both of them are in uniform. One is a male and one is a female. And this particular ceremony was to recognise um, Indigenous service. I, I really compliment the uh, South Australian government and our, and our people, um, our Ghana people and our people um, in Adelaide. Who, who wanted to recognise um, and um, uh, the contribution of our Indigenous um, men and women to the defence of Australia. Um, because even that's not just about, uh, it's not just about being a member of the Defence Force for me. What it really is about is warrior spirit. Right. Um, it, so, and, and one thing I teach a lot of our young people um, you don't have to wear a uniform to be a warrior. Um, and the other thing I teach our young people is that when we talk about the term warrior, I don't unpack that word as an aggressive word. Um, it, to me, warrior is about protection, protecting people. That's what warriors do. They protect people. Indeed. And, and, um, and, 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 and from any age, even our young people can have that warrior, have that warrior spirit. And the, that has been typified in another Ram and Jerry Dreaming story um, where the ceremony that we did in, in Gallipoli uh, with as myself and a bunch of uh, a, a mob of other Aboriginal soldiers and, and, uh, and Torres Strait Islander soldiers as well. Uh, when we went over specifically to do our very first, um, uh, in you know, First Nations peoples ceremony at Gallipoli, completely, um, for just prior to that happening, I had the honour of presenting to the chief of the army at that particular time uh, a, a Yidiki, a Yidaki, which is uh, the word we use for didgeridoo, and it just so happens the name of that didgeridoo is called. Balogan, uh, Balogan Bano Iraqi. Balogan means the is the ultimate of warrior. What warrior spirit represents? Bano is just blood, wood, which is what the didgeridoo is made of. And Yidiki Yidaki is the spiritual name uh, for a spiritual didgeridoo. Um, it's not a didgeridoo. Didgeridoos you can go. There's didgeridoos bands. People, anyone can play didgeridoo. Totally different to a Yidiki, a Yidaki. Um, a, yidi, a Yidiki or Yidaki, whichever terminology you want to use, is a spiritual instrument used for ceremony, uh, played by men, um, but been cut and prepared by Aboriginal, um, an Aboriginal man. Um, and it has a, and it is used specifically for ceremony, uh, a very significant ceremony, um, which is different to a, a didgeridoo which is a white fella's name for it anyway because of the sound that it made back in the day. But this particular Idaki that we took to Gallipoli um, had been presented to the Australian Defence Force Army by myself and a group of other men, uh, all soldiers, 
um, from all over Australia. We covered the, the width and the breadth of Australia. And, and if you looked at it, superimposed that onto a map, it, it sort of almost looked like the Southern Cross because they where their locations were. But it was representational of all of our, all of our peoples. And, um, and uh, one of the things about that particular ceremony is that prior to us going to Gallipoli, we actually took soil from Nunawal country, which is where the Australian War Memorial is. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a magnificent uh, but most uh, respected um, a monument to acknowledge all warriors um, and the sacrifice of not only them, but also their families. Because to me, um, in, in any conflict, um, it, the families suffer as well. The people who release them, uh, the people who don't see their loved ones come home. And for the ones that do come home, they're usually war-torn and injured um, and they don't come back the same. But they all don the gear to go because that's the warrior spirit. And even for our First Nations peoples, at a time when they weren't even recognised, when a time when um, they uh, couldn't even vote, and in fact, in a time when they were told they weren't even allowed to go, they still went. And that is that is Wirritchen, uh, the warrior spirit um, as well, because it's not about... Uh, it's a, it is about why, the purpose, the motive behind protecting not just your people, uh, but but all people. Uh, and and um, and we've seen so many cases of that now since the Great War and even before here in Australia, even with the Boer War. Um, I, I've had the, it's been the pleasure of being part of a, uh, a ceremony where we identified uh, one of our great uncles, a Ewan man, um, who served in the Boer War, not once, but twice, um, you know, when the colonial war was on, but then again, we're after Federation, and he was the very first Aboriginal, um, a First Nations man to receive an Imperial Medal, uh, and his name was great, Jack, uh, Jack Alec Bond, um, and we did a massive ceremony here for him uh, last year to acknowledge, him. but he, he was representational of so many of our men and women who, who do that. And that's all about that warrior spirit. And and you see why I can look at it from these through these lenses as a soldier. And and you get you required to do things that you would rather not have to do, but you know it have to be done. Yes. When you go when you go on operations, you're not looking at the person next to you through the lens of colour of skin ethnicity, language, um, belief system. You're, you're looking at a comrade and a mate, someone that you can trust, someone that you're prepared to trust your life with and they're prepared to trust their life with you. That really, when you talk about coming together, when you talk about white man and black man coming together, just the spirit of that um, is to me typifies and, 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 and magnifies the, the spirit of Wirtchen. Absolutely. And, and I honestly I believe Uncle Uncle Carno, he, he knew that. He knew that. That's why when he presented that kangaroo skin, yep, we had lots of different totems. We had um, ancestors, our ancestors were there, the Southern Cross was there, the spirituality of it was there. But he also had a had a uh, had an Aboriginal man in a military uniform. Yeah. And and that uniform was the dress of the then Great War. Okay, so we're talking, and Australia is renowned, um, and New Zealand for the birth of what they call um, the spirit of Anzac. Okay, um, when two great continents, countries come together uh, with a common cause, and and we we talk about, um, you know, the the spirit behind Anzac. But can, uh, I would. I would say that that spirit was there a long time before Anzac, uh, particularly for our people, um, and no doubt for others as well. So it, it, through whatever conflicts and they've had to fight, and one of the things that I really do and we teach our young people is that it is so important that we continually take time to remember these things 
because these are the essences of a real culture, the real teaching of our culture, um, of our traditional culture, you know, and that's why ceremony is so important. Um, that, and, and it's not about glorifying war or conflict or anything like that. It's about uh, recognition, identifying um, and, and taking the time to recognise the sacrifice of not just the ones that don the uniform but the families and the loved ones as well. But it's also, for me, about reconciliation where as, a great, as great countries and great continents and, and we can move together um, for, with a common purpose. And I guess at the end of the day, that common purpose, I think, has to lay in the hands of our children, our young people. Um, I often talk and teach about they are our future and it's so important that they understand the essence of the Wirich and Pegrelin spirit but understand it, um, uh, not just as a name or a word but as a spiritual, um, strengthening, powerful um, responsibility that we need to be able to teach them so they can grow up and continue to carry that forward. Um, I mentioned the second part of the dreaming story uh, when we took the Yidiki to, to, um, uh, to Gallipoli. It's got a Remingeri story on it, another Remingeri dreaming story, and it's called Mama Wee Nunkri Wallen Me Wee, which now is about... It's a continuation of the Wirichin and it's about Blackfella and Blackfella coming together in peace or all tribes and nations of our First Nations peoples coming together in peace. You know, um, what we did was we, we took soil from, we did a ceremony at uh, the Australian War Memorial on Nunawal country with the permission of their elders um, and took soil from the lone pine tree. And I had the absolute honour and privilege and we took it to, with the didgeridoo, with the yidaki, sorry, with the yidaki, and other uh, and other artefacts to boomerangs, polkas, um, fighting boomerangs, and there's a whole other story there. And other, uh, and we did, cer we did ceremony at, at Anzac Cove in traditional dress, playing traditional um, instrument, uh, you know, uh, like uh, our, uh, we had the warrup, which is a, 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 a drum of the Torres Strait Islander people, and the thrum, which, but and cool up. But we also had the sticks and the and the yidikis, and our men wore traditional um, dress there. But the soil, I had the absolute honour and privilege of taking the soil that we took from Australia in the Nargan and spreading it into the soil at Gallipoli. It's quite a moving Honoring. experience. Yeah, as a, and seeing how we can visualise how during the Great War uh, and those massive initial battles that all that water was red um, just from the, uh, from the um, you know, from the effects of war. <clears throat> but mixing the soil together and then grouping it up and bringing it back, yes, and ceremoniously back to Australia, and then taking that soil back to Nunawal country, the Australian War Memorial in Canberra, uh, in the Australian Capital Territory. And the intent of that was that no matter who your mob were or where you were from, um, you were invited to go and just grab a handful of that soil, and you could take that soil back to your own country. Um, and when I, I'm talking about our First Nations peoples, uh, wherever that may be within Australia or the Torres Straits, um, um, to, because you've got to remember that culturally, um, even though we had the, uh, the Yiriki uh, and uh, the sticks and the thrum and the warrup, and that all our peoples don't all identify um, um, in their in their cultural practices of those particular instruments, not all of them. And so um, so what this did then was provided a means or a method where they too could be participate in this um, opportunity 
uh, to be not only be respectful, but, but also to have closure. One of the things I found when I was in another ceremony, uh, again, acknowledging warriors, uh, Indigenous uh, First Nations men and women around Australia and other countries, was um, one of the things that our people look for was closure. I think most people do and when you lose a loved one, particularly under those circumstances. So, wow, Uncle Colin, um, you've got a lot of stories, a lot of wisdom to share, a lot of history that's brought you to this place. I'm so grateful that you've been so kind in, in sharing those stories. What really impacted me was the virgin story as in your analogy of, of being in the defense force and being in battle. And it's just another beautiful way of seeing how people come together. Because as you say, you're standing with your brothers from different places, different countries, and you've all got that same unity spirit. And how powerful is that? I mean, that's really the on, only way we can get anything done is uniting in a common vision. Sure. And using the analogy for for standing for your country is is something that we could, can apply to now, particularly you know, um, uniting in the beautiful vision of bringing people together, no matter where they're coming from. Again, it's beautiful to see that there's pe there are people around the world that that hold this vision. Um, mm. Everything that you came to to connect with Kano and all that has come from that. We're hoping to take it now forward so that people everywhere can embrace it. As, Absolutely. As, yeah. So I'm sure we're gonna have a lot more to say and a lot more to, to discover along this journey. It was very, mm -hmm. very lovely to meet you and to, to hear your journey in meeting Walk Kano Walker and and how you've lived Wirigen, how you've carried Wirigen throughout your life in the Defence Force, and, and that you're sharing it with the young people today. And I know that yes. you, you're going to be very instrumental in, in the teaching of Wirigen to our young ones on our site, and I thank you for that. Thank you so much, Louise. And, uh, and I do uh, extend to all your listeners and, and those that are there um, my most sincere respect and regards. Uh, and for safe journey and safe travels, dear. Thank you. Likewise to you. We'll catch up again soon. Thanks, Louise. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Nicole. Bye. Bye-bye, dear. Bye.